Welcome to the Encore Live today. Yeah. In uh, Wesley Morris's Casa here. Mm hmm. At your kitchen table. So it's been a minute since we've done this. We did some different things with Easter, uh, build up to Easter. But we're back in John, right? We are back in John, chapter six. I feel more pressure when it's live. I don't know why. Like, we we don't re record anything when we record no. it. Like, it's just as it is. We've never really changed anything much, but right. uh, I feel like something's different. It's good though. Welcome. It's good to see everybody. Hope you're doing well. Camera. Hope you're so doing I want to well. Talk about some things that have been happening. All right. This is not encore related at all, but just pretty cool too. In in our ministry, we've been doing a lot of things like this, sitting you know behind cameras and recording. And so, yep. um, weirdly enough, this has helped you and me probably see different sides of ministries that we yeah. see every day. I yes. So I'm just going to give a shout out to some people in our ministry that I think have been extremely awesome in kind of the area of, of discipleship. So mm -hmm. Continuing to, to put out the word. Yeah, and I like teachings it. Teachings and things like that. First, and I'm going to start with Neil and Parker because they're behind the scenes of all of these Everything things. you see. Everything. Just about. Everything. I mean. They're probably working twice as much as a normal uh, pre-COVID time. Yeah, and there are some other people too. There are some, uh, there's, there's Leone, there's Josh, there, there's some other people throwing down uh, in the tech area that never get seen. Right. So therefore, no applause for them typically. But right. boy, uh, we would be, well, we'd be broken down on the side of the road if it wasn't for these people throwing 100%. down, making the tech 100%. machine go. So, um, yeah, I wanted to throw out a shout out to them. And then also in the family ministry, Christy and Ashley have just been doing some amazing things with the with the little kiddos, and then uh, Michael, who's new on staff. Mike Fitz, Michael never Fitzgerald. Worked, never worked a day in the office with the guy. Literally a day. The oh. day he was hired, I think, and then after that, it was like, or no, the first day in the office, we had a meeting how to deal with the pandemic. Yes, that was yes. the first day. Yeah, how we were going to be not yeah. in the office. Yeah, so I just want to throw a shout out to all those people. Michael, it's been great having you on, and Christine Ashley. Brian, Brian Mott doing uh, some teen stuff and part of the family ministry, uh, everything that's happening. And then Being Jeff Lincoln also behind the scenes. Lincoln delivering, delivering food. Uh, we got people like Steve Mitchell and my wife and those teams, the other the other people in the men's ministry, the women's ministry, teaching Bible studies. All Tracy Helms is organizing a team with people calling. Yes, if you got a call, it was largely orchestrated by Tracy Helms. Uh, we got some people picking up some prayer things now for um, those that are watching the TV broadcast because we're going to start putting on the TV broadcast that happens on Fox. Contacting people who are yeah, texting yeah, gospel, yep, writing, yeah, writing yeah. Writing Follow, uh, boy, boy, we could go on a minute. Could write letters to prisoners. It's it's mm -hmm. really cool. people in the jail are getting letters. Sure, Good I'm job, sure people. Left out somebody, but I just wanted to celebrate. Good that job, a bit. And so great. A, an Easter season too, so things are a little bit different. But anyways, what's happening? You ready? We're ready to dive into this. Let's go. Okay, John chapter six is is bread of life. This is like. This is like Pastor Westmore's wheelhouse right here. Oh, man, I love it. I... John is gospel-centered for the most part, but this yeah. is one where it's just like, dude, this is, you know what I mean? Like, you were like a rear, rear to go like this. I can't wait to dude, see it. Dude, so it's my favorite gospel, and this may be my favorite part. It's not. there. I just thought of other I chapters in it, but it's, it's one of my favorite parts of my favorite gospel in the Bible. It's great. It's chapter That's 6. Cool. All right. So let's let's uh, dive into some questions. Chapter six, verse twenty-five. Mm, it says, "When they yes. found him on the other side, they said, Rabbi, why did you come here?" And he says, "Truly, I say to, to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the fill of the loaves." Mm -hmm. Why did he not answer the question there? What's happening here? He didn't uh, answer their question. Yeah, I love it. He right. does that a lot. <laughs> yeah. he, like he, the, someone will ask you a question. Right. Jesus is like, "Oh yeah, well, what about outer space?" Like, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> like, so what he just spe he speaks out in left field somewhere. He doesn't even address it because I think what he always does is, what's the Bible say? Man looks at the outward appearance. God yeah. looks at the heart, yeah. and Jesus is always. I use the word drilling down to the heart issue of people. So if they want to talk here, he will ask a question or make a declaration that gets to what he really knows is the motive. And I think what he's doing is he speaks to motive. You know, Rabbi, when did you get here? Why did you come here? That's not what you're asking. You want more miracles. And I think that's what he's saying. Like, stop, stop. Stop 
ask the question behind the question. You want more magic. You yeah. want thrills. You want self-focused miracles for the flesh. I think that's why he said what he said. He doesn't answer their question as to why he came there. He says, you are seeking me, because not because you saw signs, because you ate the loaves and were filled. You are seeking me to continue gratifying fleshly desires. That's why, that's why you're asking. You're, you're faking a conversation. Okay. So the question, why, why did you come here? I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit on a practical side. You and I, we do different types of ministry, weekend, weekdays types of things. And we always say things like, we welcome anybody to, to be here. We hope you hear yeah. the message. So yeah. certainly there are people that have come. I'm not specifically speaking of anybody just in general when you mm -hmm. see that many people somebody has come for the wrong reason i would assume when you say come you're talking about show up attend a church yes. attend an event yes. a, bible attend a bible study yeah just, i'm gonna go hang see what's going on right. could be the wrong reason right but you and i would say we, we welcome you we hope you sit here we hope mm -hmm. you hear the gospel so i'm gonna ask what is what is the difference in us welcoming those people and jesus kind of calling out the same type of person I mean, I, I think there's no difference. I, he doesn't reject them. Mm -hmm. I think we should do what he does. I think we should lead people to the truth of their own heart mm -hmm. with the word of God. He doesn't not welcome them. He doesn't not welcome the sinner, uh, the evil person, the selfish person, the self-seeking. He, he doesn't not entertain their company. Mm -hmm. But he gets to the heart of the matter. I think if we entertained their fleshly desires, yeah. making our desire to have a large number of people sit and stay, that's bad on our part. Yep. But I think we should do exactly what he did. I think we should push them to the mirror of the motive of their own soul. And that might drive people away. Mm -hmm. um, but at least we told the truth. I, I, I think... I think there should be no difference. Yeah, I think that's really good, too. And I think some of the difference is just on, for an example's sake, on a Sunday uh, morning, we, we're not having conversations with every single person that is in there. So we don't know right, the motive. Right. And we are hoping that you hear the truth in all of this. Certainly there have been times where you and I have sat down with somebody and gone, dude, your motive's off here. You know, yeah. you're, you're looking at the wrong things. You're asking for the wrong things. So... Jesus has a little bit of a cheat code because he's Jesus, so he sees it into their right. heart. Right? Yes, he does. Like having the conversation, this is what it is, but that's a good answer. Did you have something else to say? That? No, no, I, I, I agree. I, I guess just to practically illustrate how I think we do that as best we can. I'm sure we're flawed in it, but we try. Mm -hmm. Like I'll preach or you or somebody, we will say, it's possible you are here only because you're in a crisis yeah. and you want yeah. God to fix the crisis yeah. and then you will be gone. We'll say that to people's face. I think we say it nice. I hope we try, right. but we say it and that's confrontational. Like I'll say like many of you, meaning the people say many of you know about God or have a general belief in a God on a, in a general way, but you don't know him. You've not repented of sin and you don't want to like, we'll, we'll say it. And I, I didn't invent that on my own. I see Jesus doing that. And so I'm like, well, how can I do that? Right. Yeah, and maybe this is more real today for some people than it has been because maybe you've lost, people have lost your job or yeah. your health is yeah. a little bit um, scary, and so you're seeking Jesus so that maybe there's a way out. But mm -hmm. even in that, like we're through a camera on television, whatever it would be, making sure that the truth is presented. I don't, hey, I don't know why you're here, right? I don't know the questions that you're asking, but this right. this is the truth of the heart of the matter, and. Of course, specifically in this passage, it's like these things, these things don't matter, but the gospel does. It's cool. Uh, verse 28, he says, I'm going to read it. It says, they, they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? They had the wrong intentions, the wrong motives. What, what are they asking in this part here? What are they saying? Well, I think, I think they're saying similar to what the rich young ruler said in Mark. Um, he comes seeking Jesus, same, same kind of deal. Yeah. It gets to a conversation about eternal life, and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus confronts them about work for the food which endures to eternal life. Oh, it's about eternal. Well, what do we need to do for that? I think it's a box check. That's what it was for the rich young ruler. That's what it is for a lot of people. Like, well, what do I need to do where God gives me this eternal life and I can move on? I think that's what they're saying. Um, 
what shall we do that we may work the works of God? All right, well, what do we do to make God happy then? Yeah. Like, oh, we, we haven't made him happy. We're not doing the right thing. Well, tell us the right thing to do. And people want to know, give me the list. Give me the formula to attain eternal life. And, of yeah. course, Jesus is going to confront that now. So, I think that's what they mean, kind of. So just to play the devil's advocate, in some senses, that seems like it's good-hearted. I don't understand. Like, why, why would, you know what I mean? Like, to come to him and say, what, what do I need to do to, to understand these things? Sometimes I see it as we've had, this happens all the time. People will, you could say, it, let's just stay away from ministry, on a, doc, a doctor's opinion. Somebody will go get 10 different doctors' opinions yeah. waiting for that one yes. guy that says, oh, no, you're okay, you're fine to yes. do this. And it seems that it was a little bit of that that type of mindset where they're waiting for the rich young ruler. Yes. As long as you don't ask me to give up this stuff, I'm willing to, I'm willing to do something. Right, and I think the only reason we know that is because Jesus reveals the motive of their heart when yeah. he confronts them. If we didn't know anything about anything and they say, what must we do to inherit eternal life, it might be a pure motive question. I, don't, I think oftentimes we don't know. Mm -hmm. So you just answer it. And he does answer it. He gives the real answer. He's not mad. Like he said, well, this is what you do. Right. So he answers right. it knowing that they don't really care to hear the real answer. Yeah. But he still gives them the answer, as he did with the rich young ruler. Yeah. You know, he, I think verse 29, he gives the answer. But Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I don't know if you're going to mention something of that. He says, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. And he knows they will not and they do not truly believe in him, and they're not going to. Right. But since they're asking with a bad motive, he still kindly and clearly goes, well, you got to believe. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. This, and, is, this is what it's all about. And you could easily say, add to that, you know, and you don't. Yeah, so then he goes in to talk a little bit more about uh, the bread of life and basically says that I, I am in this bread of life. This can give you eternal life. And then they... Are, are listening to them, him, and they say in verse 34, they say to him, sir, give us this bread always. Mm -hmm. When you're reading this, when you're teaching it, it's it's kind of comical, right? Cause you're it's like, funny. Oh, hold on, hold on. What Did you guys really not get this? Did you completely miss it? After he's been saying all these things, and I think it's natural for us to be like, what is happening here? These guys, this is hilarious. But I want to talk about maybe practical ways in our culture that, that we're doing that today, that we're missing mm -hmm. our point. So what's some things that you see in our church culture where the truth has been presented and you still ask this question like, wait, did you just miss everything that was said? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, a lot of times you give people spiritual counsel and they miss it clean, you know. I, I guess that's what, you know, and I think, I don't know, you had said something earlier. I forget what you said, but it spurred a thought before we were on the air. You, okay. said, you said, it's like this, but I can't remember what you said. What would you say? Did you remember? You had a good, <laughs> you had a Sorry, good thought. You reminded me to remember. Yeah, dang it, it was a good thought. But what was it on the lines of? I mean, it was an example of what people say and what we do ourselves, you know. But I, I guess I think like, okay, well, if that's what I got, if the, if if I'm if I don't have the right thing, then give me the right thing, and I can. They're still wanting to get whatever will give them what they want and move on no one wants to leave and follow here in this particular conversation i think that's still true today so an example i think i guess maybe you spurred this thought or that it came to me but someone's marriage is falling apart completely i've had this happen like people that do not know the lord and the only reason i've had people come for counsel that say i don't really believe in god but i want to know what you would have to say to me about because my marriage isn't going very well mm -hmm. and i will say like okay well, you know you came to a Christian. Yes, I know that. Just say what you would say to anybody. Right. I'm like, okay. So I'll tell them, you know, look, the Bible says that uh, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, and wives submit to your husband as unto the Lord. And I'll talk about Jesus is the center of both sides that builds the marriage well. And you can say that to somebody, and they'll, okay, okay, well, well, what do I need to do then? What do I need to do to make that happen? Like, dude, you just missed it. You are denying the Lord of the marriage. You So what they're saying is, okay, give your speech about Jesus and then tell me a practical thing to do to have a magic marriage. Yeah. And they want to take that, fix their marriage and go, and they don't want Jesus with it. And that's what these people, well, give us the bread. Give us a, he, and he, that's what he's saying next. I am the bread. Like there's no, he's like, you guys, like, and people want a practical nugget attached to the Lord, but they don't want the Lord. Leave him behind. And so, you know, people want a magic pill to fix their marriage, their family, but they don't want Jesus to do it. Right. They don't want to submit to him. And that's what these people don't want. 
Yeah, this isn't the, this isn't the main message here, but it, it we're kind of alluding to the fact that there is a a cost in following the yeah. Lord. You know, and I think when it comes down to it, people aren't willing to trade that. You've you've said a lot in sermons, and you talk about these things, but you don't want to. You don't just want it. Said plainly, you don't want you don't. to. And somebody would say, but I but I do. I think the deeper part of that is you're not willing to give up something. It's not that important to you. Like, no. It doesn't rank high on the priority list. Mm-mm. It's just kind of here. So you're like, no, I would not rather give up those things. And I think that's kind of kind of what it comes down to. Yeah. No, no. The, 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 I mean, the Bible says that I, I took that from Revelation when it says uh, the church there and the spirit of Jezebel, it says, I gave her time to repent, but she yeah. does not want doesn't to. Want to. And a lot of people, they don't want to repent. They don't want to turn away from sin. If if I said, man, your marriage, your family will be better, guaranteed, it be a miracle. Oh, yeah. If you turn yeah. away from these things and turn toward Jesus, a lot of people won't do it. Yeah. They'd rather burn it down to hold on to that idolatry. Yeah. This is just a side, a side note because we're talking about this. Do you think people now during this pandemic are more open to hearing or do you think it's the same as it has always been? How do, you, how do you view a situation like this when – maybe people are listening that wouldn't before do you see them as probably looking for the wrong reasons or do you think man the door is open more than it ever has been i i think the door is open but and i'm glad to like so if the answer is are more people willing to hear yes i think so and i have examples that i wouldn't betray somebody's confidence yeah to give it here, but I've had people come to me that would not normally have come to me because of what's happening. Now, will they do? You know what it reminds me of? I don't know. It it reminds me of when the plagues happened in Egypt. I would look at this. I'm not saying God sent it or I I don't know what this is. I don't want to get into all that again, but, but let's say pretty big disclaimer to say, we got to make sure you say that. Oh my goodness, dude. Uh, So, but the, the plagues in Egypt happened. Mm -hmm. The Bible says over and over, Pharaoh and his guys came, and they're like, man, we see that this is the hand of God, tells Moses, go out and make it stop. We, we, we will relent in our persecution of God's people, in our idolatry. We will walk this back if, if our repentance will make this stop. Go tell God to stop. We acknowledge him. Moses goes out, lifts his hands to the heavens, particular plague will stop. And then the Bible says, this, the, no sooner does it stop and everything goes back to normal, they harden their heart over again and they go right back in even a more severe rebellion against God. I think in many ways that's what this will be. And, I mean, I, I'm, I guess I'm not a positive motivational speaker no, right I, now, but, I get it, I get it. but it's true, man. And I, and I think, and, and we just have to be faithful as Christians to take the moment we got. I don't know what they're going to do, um, but it says that... Oh, I won't be able to find it. It's somewhere right here. Oh, yeah, right here. Wow, it was a miracle of the Lord. So the frogs came upon the people and all this stuff. The Lord said to Moses, uh, stretch out your hand, all this stuff. Uh, Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, entreat the Lord that he may remove the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. So he does it, and Pharaoh and he said, tomorrow... And it says, the frogs will depart from your house. They went to Pharaoh. Moses cried to the Lord, and it stopped. And it says, when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them. That's a perfect picture of that. That's good. I think that's what will happen. Yeah. When they see that there is relief, they'll go back to the idolatry. Go back to money, greed, running around, busy in their life, materialism. A lot of people will go back. Yeah, that story is bizarre, too, to see, to see that happen over and over and to think, wow. Yeah. It just continues to turn back. I know. So towards the end of your sermon, you had talked about people will behold him but not know him. Yeah. So, all right, this is what I think of when I think of <laughs> beholding him. I think of an old Sandy Petty song. You know the song, We Shall Behold Him? We, wait, 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 wait. The skies shall unfold. Yeah, is that right? We shall behold him. Yes, it's phenomenal. So, <laughs> it, It's real good. So I picture, I get, this is just, this is how I think of it. Beholding him is like the most amazing thing, like sitting in his presence, right? <laughs> Sandy, Sandy Daddy. Daddy. Me, Every, me, right? Nobody under 45 years no old way. got that reference. No nobody. <laughs> Dude, okay. if you've never heard of Sandy Patty. Parker, just, you ever heard of Sandy Patty? Just just listen <laughs> nope. to that one song. Just just Google that one song, Spotify, YouTube. I don't know where you're going to get it. 
We Shall Be Holding. It's on YouTube. It's, I've it's, listened to it in the it car a couple times. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Don't mock her hair. You anyway, will, yeah. so I see that like like being in the presence. But what what are you referring to when you're saying some people will behold him but never really know him? I think the reality that Jesus is Lord and Savior. They see this is what I need. This is the problem of my soul. This is the remedy for my heart. I see that. The rich young ruler saw Jesus like he was there. What must I do to inherit eternal life? I mean, if the Pharaoh beheld God and his prophet and knew this is the Lord. I behold him, his power. They behold him through conviction. I'm going to talk about that this week, how God draws at people. Okay. Um, they see it. Convicted. I mean, there's lots of things I could say. I won't talk too much. Mm-hmm. But they know what I ha- what is aching in my soul has cut to my heart, and the answer is Jesus. They have that moment of clarity. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, what was? But they don't believe sometimes. You, you can you can but, come that right, far right. and go, no, harden oh, over. Right. Don't end up surrendering. Okay, so I'm now I'm thinking about Sandy Patty. I saw Sandy Patty at the Fox Theater when I was come on <laughs> six. Years I was going to say you had to be about five six years old. Six years yeah. old, and she brought all the kids up on stage. It was you. Like, Literally, all the kids. Literally, all no the kids. way, there Scott. Were hundreds of kids. Yeah, I bet. Stage, whatever. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Wow, what a Who? what a mess that would be. <laughs> we can't talk about sports anymore, by the way. We no, no, people are tired sports. of it. So let's talk about music. Okay. Sorry, I'm going sideways on this. People are mad. Who are your most influential? Just, just Christian musicians right now. We'll stick with that. Right now? Oh, wow. No, no, no. In, in your life. Oh, in my life. In your lifetime. I say that because I, I think about growing up with Sandy Penny, <sighs> listening to the cassette tapes on the way to school all the time. What, what do you mean by influential? Well, you're not a singer, so it's like he shaped the way that I That's do the way I voice. sing when Lindsay leads and I hope nobody hears me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who are your favorite? Favorite singers, artists? The Gaither Vocal Band is instantly at the front of my mind. I was trying to find someone else. So then the, all the soloists are from the Gaither vocal, vocal band. They really are. Yeah. Number one being yeah. Guy Penrod. Yeah. Number one. I mean, I, I think Guy Penrod, Michael English is unreal. And I know he had a lot of trouble in his life and repented more than one time. I, I, God be the judge of all that. I'm not here to speak to every person's authentic uh, character or profession of faith or whatever. I've I've been quite moved by Michael English's testimony of oh, yeah. repenting from sin yeah. and stuff. He is unreal. Like I mean, you know, David Phelps is the best. I think he's the best. But I I I'd rather listen to Guy Penrod. <laughs> what do you got? All the same names? Well, yeah. It's, <laughs> no. Yeah, Guy Penrod because we're this old school. We're old school. It's pretty funny. We're old and school. The, the new peeps now. I'm like I don't even know who that is. There are people Steve I like Green, now. Steve Green was massive. So. Same camp, though. <laughs> Same crew. You know that, right? I did not know that. Steve Green did? Yeah. I did not know that. You just blew my mind. I didn't know that. What? Crazy. What was that? Remember? That was the concert we went to, right? In Raleigh, Durham. <laughs> you don't want to get into that one. No, I'm not going to get into it. When I first went to school, I don't know if you thought the same thing. When I first went to Liberty at age 18, I didn't know any of that music i didn't know they were singing shout to the lord and i'm like i don't know what this is okay that's hill song though right I, well i'm just darlene check i don't know who wrote it i'm just saying it was all shout to the lord is totally hill song probably is. yeah everything's hill song. darlene check yeah i'm just saying i got i got to liberty and i was like i don't know any of this stuff no like, it was a whole new no i only knew gaither Right. You knew Gaither then, right? I knew well, Gaither. They're, they're not in that. that no, they're not in that. Camp. No. no, right. When we there there was a modern school. thing where I'm yes. like, uh, even a lot of Michael W. Smith, I didn't know some of the worship side of stuff. I knew the songs on the radio, friends are friends forever, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Do you think his voice is as good stop, as... Stop, <laughs> stop, stop it. I can't. I, mean, I can't. He's a nice guy. Did I ever tell you? How much time are we oh, burning no, right no, 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 now? No, no, no. Are we all right? We got... Are people still watching? <laughs> I don't. I, I didn't start it. I didn't start the timer. We're at Twenty-six. We got like three minutes. Dude, uh, I've told you the story about when I was eating chocolate chip cookies at a table, and I, and Michael W. Smith was next to me. I didn't know it was him. Did I ever tell you this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, he said, "Hey, we were both standing at this table. It was at a Billy Graham crusade. We were we were backstage. We were doing this thing, and uh, they had like waters and celery and cookies back there. So I'm in this like green room. Is what it would be." 
And I'm back there by myself. I was all alone. I wasn't married at the time. I was in college. I had no, my roommate wasn't there. And I was just, I, he was there, but he wasn't there. And I was, uh, I was just back there like eating celery. And this dude comes up next to me. This is in his prime too, dude. Comes up next to me and he goes, hey man, he goes, how you doing? He goes, you here for, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I work with these guys sometimes, travel a little bit. And uh, he goes, oh, I'm like, what's your name? <laughs> He goes, he goes, oh, hey, man, I'm Michael Smith. And I go, oh, hey, dude. And uh, we're, there were these plate of chocolate chip cookies. We're just crushing chocolate chip cookies. And so I'm just talking normal. Credit to him. He didn't have to tell me who he yeah, was. He right, could have used right. the W. And right. all of a sudden, dude, it comes to the front of my mind. I'm like, this is Michael W. Smith. Doggone it. I'm a, say, yes, you like Michael yes, W. I, I go, yeah. dude, I'm sorry. I'm like, you're Michael W. Smith. You're singing tonight. He goes, oh, it's okay, man. That's great. He goes, no, he was super nice. So I can, because of you so nice and I was so embarrassed, I can't say anything mean about him. He's, he's great, dude. I, I love that guy. Okay, here's the best information we got so far. Bob, our good friend Bob. Tamarisi. Bob, oh, yeah. yeah. He actually sang Yo, he, the Gospelman Quartet for many years and actually recorded it at the Gator Studios. I know Bob? Bob, dude, Bob's legit. Bob, Bob sang let's with get the, you singing on our next encore. Bob <laughs> sang sang with the gospel men. Yeah, wow. I knew this. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I knew That's it. That's pretty cool. He he he's brought. This is probably the third time he's brought it up. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you love it, dude. You oh, love talking about that. Awesome, it's great, Bob. man. We man, should. We'll go on a car ride sometime at Blair, the Gaither Vocal Band. We'll all sing it. John the Revelator. Oh, It'll be great. My heaven. That is Go, let's talk about something else. Oh, well, we're probably Are we done? Close. Yeah, so <laughs> you probably just close it down. That was a lot Give of fun. Give us a little preview where you're going next week. Yeah, this is a blast, time. dude. It's uh, So I thought I was going to get to that crazy part where Jesus says, uh, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood mm-hmm. abides in me, but I'm not going to make it. I want to make it. Next week I will, but not this week. This week I, I, I'm going to deal with the part where it says, uh, he go, the, the crux of it will be, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And uh, I'm going to talk about that. Oh, I got some good questions already. Right. Uh, yeah, you will. No one. And yeah. so I'm going to say some crazy stuff. And there will be people... Happy and unhappy on both sides of particular issues. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm like just going to... Last week when we talked about Governor Whitmer? Yeah, that went over well. <laughs> <laughs> both sides. Uh, both sides. So, so if I do it right, there'll be people mad and happy on all sides. Hey, so that's, so that, that's the plan. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk about how nobody comes to God. There's no one out there on their own searching for the Lord unless the Father draws them. I'm going to try to get into that and what wow. that might okay. mean. Very good. Forgive our quarantitis today. We're a little bit uh, amped we're, up. We're, <laughs> we're slapping ourselves, man. Hey, don't take our word for it being his this week, and we'll see you next week on the Encore.